Hi there. Uh, here we are. This is uh, this is my new compressor. Uh, I did touch on it before. Uh, it's, it was kind of almost free um, when you consider the dryer uh, and the receiver that I got with the Bogue compressor. Unfortunately, the Bogue compressor decided to give up the ghost, so they gave me this, which is remarkable. This is a Kaiser HPC ASD32, um, 120 odd CFM, um, energy efficient screw compressor, and I just can't believe my luck. So, uh, massive, massive big up to these guys. Uh, they are the monkeys. They really looked after me. Uh, they gave me all the pipe fittings for everything, so all the fittings and gave me advice on leave tees for um, future expansions. So as we go through here, um, that'll expand down to the powder booth, uh, which is down there. And uh, yeah, there's an oil, oil water separator. Got to mount that properly. Uh, the cooler, which is the air dryer, not hair dryer, air dryer. Um, that's the rig that's in the back there now. Um, I've got takeoffs everywhere for all kinds of stuff just in case. So yeah, that's the first thing. Okay, second thing. Um, got fed up with paying a fortune for laser cutting, so bom bom bom. Uh, after the drill CNC. Uh, I had one of my suppliers say, can you make me a little 1200 by 1200, well, 1250 by 1250 plasma CNC machine? Well, here we are. Uh, one bare bones plasma CNC machine. Uh, I'm using SBR20 from CNC for you. Uh, I'm fixing it like this. Makes easy access, easy maintenance. Um, it's not super heavy, it's 100, 100 by 3 box section, as you can see. Um, and it's not long, these come in 1500 lengths, uh, 1 meter 500 lengths. A uh, little bit tricky to set up, you've got to make your frame dead square um, and not 3 mil out, like that one is. Um, it's easy enough to do if you. If you are very, very fussy about your measurements, I see a lot on YouTube of people just sort of bashing them together and it seems borderline criminal. Um, you've got to take a little bit of time. Um, you've got to make sure that when you set up origin initially that it is level. So you just check across the lines, make sure it's dead level. Um, if not, shim it because the floor is never, never 100% level. So that is fairly nice. Ideally, I would like to use a laser level, um, but one that's accurate enough to do it properly is a little bit out of my league, a bit expensive. A standard laser level is only accurate within two or three mil anyway. So, you know, a builder's laser level, no point messing around with that because two, three mil is a big out. Um, the secret really is to choose your, your datum point that you're gonna work from. Um, set your rails distance. Exactly. Now, I say exactly. I use a vernier. Measure from there to there. Yeah. Um, put the screws in. Um, give it a little tippy tap um, to make sure that the uh, to make sure that the, the line stays, you know, the rail stays dead parallel to that piece of box, which is your datum piece of box section or the part of the frame that you're going to make every measurement from. So. So this is pretty much as far as I've got. It glides, absolutely glides. It's just easy peasy. There's no no binding, no, no sticking or anything like that. Um, the rack's gonna go on the outside here. I'm gonna run the rack through here. Uh, I'm gonna run it off the back here a little because the motors will mount off the back here. So the motors will be here. Uh, it's just sprung loaded onto the uh, onto the rack and then uh, across here is going to be my uh, x-axis now the x-axis I like to build these slightly different to the way most people do 
most people would put two SBRs here and here. I don't know why I don't like that, and I don't know why I just don't trust it. So what I do, I put an SBR here, and I put an SBR on the top. So it is then super rigid this way. Yeah, and also it allows you to um, to put slotted holes in, in the top of your plate that holds your lifter. Uh, and you can tweak it around and make it, you know, make your plasma art dead upright. Uh, you could do it the other way as well. It's just you're inducing so much twist into stuff that uh, I don't know. I just, I'm sure I'll be told off, and people will say, "Well, it won't hurt to do it like that." But it is what it is. So there we go. This is as far as I've got. Um, a previous one I made. Uh, this is one for myself uh, for a previous company, which is a story I'll tell you all about one day when I'm dead uh, I made this twice as long out here I don't see the point um, so to keep the form factor as small as possible uh, the torch is going to sit about here so if we look at the inline of that it's going to sit about there it's about 200 mil off that face so I've designed it in such a way that when you get to the end of your 1500 run here the torch it's going to be kind of there, which is where the water tray is going to be. So we're going to have a water tray with this one. And of course, as I've already explained, the travel on the back, that just allows for the uh, rack to go through because I'm a rack and pinion system. Uh, when, you, when you think about things like this, and a lot of this was designed in my head, but based on its experience of building others, um, you just want the biggest cut area as possible. So. What I've effectively got here is about 1,350 along the y-axis, which is this axis. And I've got pretty much 1,300 going across the x-axis, which is across the beam there. Um, reason for that is I don't like plasma cutting too close to the rails. Now, I could have mounted these rails down the side. Um, and I could also put the motors on the side, but if you think about it, what you're doing is that you're adding 50 mil here, and then your motor has to be horizontal and not vertical. So your motor comes out here. So what you're doing, and that's both sides, because there's a twin drive on the y-axis. Uh, so then you end up with your table being, you know, the better part of two meters wide, and then you still got to find somewhere to put your cable trace. So what I do is that I use um, cable tidies, snake cable tidies, and I run them along this side because this side is a free side. So once you mount it on top, this side is a free side. Now, I know there are going to be people that are going to say, you know, you shouldn't do it like this, you shouldn't do it like that, whatever. But the way I look at it like this is that if everything is on the surface or on the upside, it makes it so damn easy to service it. Because if you think about this, to take out those bearings to service them, it's four bolts, look, and you can get to it, so you just chuck it under there, undo the four bolts, slide the bearing out, slide it right off the end of your SBR, soak them in paraffin, oil them all up, make sure they're not rusty, blah blah blah, um, and that's it, service done. And think how easy it is to replace these, these are like just a few quid each, uh, they're not super expensive. So why go to the hassle of building a side rail side rack, taking up loads more room system um, when you can do it like this and just make life easier for yourself. And believe you me, I'm all for making life easier for myself where possible. So there we go. That's pretty much where we are. I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do as far as the plasma torch is concerned. And what I mean by that is you can put the plasma torch cable in snake tray and feed it back to the plasma cutter. Um, I actually prefer to hang it over the top. I don't know why, it just keeps it all out of the way, keeps it tidy, and it allows you to um, you know, not have to run cables next to that HF firing cable off the plasma. Uh, it's just my thing, I suppose. And uh, I'll get to, I'll do a video of the control box and whatever. However, the other thing I did want to mention is that this is a effectively a 1700 by 1700 footprint. I'm building one for me, which is going to be 1700 by three meters. 
So what I'll be able to do then is get an easy eight before sheet on it and it's just going to make my life easier. Now obviously the shop, as you can see, powder booth, powder oven, CNC drill, workbenches, stations, blah, blah, tool chest, compressors, more workstations, steel racks, saw. All that racking back there is gonna go in my new container that I've got out here. Yeah. That is filled with all of these that have got to be powder coated this week at some point. Um, and this is my general storage area. And there's the bits for my CNC when I get to build that, which will be in the next couple of weeks. And I'll keep you updated on all of that. Uh, just as a little bit of a side note, uh, I went and bought myself a little present. So on my little 690, ah, I got an Akrapovich. Oh, what a difference. I've taken the baffle out. Pretty big mistake. That damn thing is so loud. Really, really loud. Uh, anyway, that was a bit of a side issue. Um, here's the lifter. Thought I'd show you that. CNC for you, they do these lifters for about 250, 300 quid. Well worth it. Don't piss around trying to make your own. Just get one off those guys. It's so much easier. And the amount of time that you spend making one you know, you've got the ball screws set up, you've got all the bearings to set up, you've got all the other bits and pieces to buy for it. So you've got to buy this piece. You've got these bearings to buy. You've got the, like I say, you've got the, the all the screw to set up. You've got to machine all these surfaces. Make sure you've got good surfaces. Sod that. Make it easier for yourself. Build it. Uh, buy it inbuilt and don't build it yourself. That's what I'd say. Anyway, there we go. That's where we're at. Thought I could uh, fill you in. The workshop is a complete and utter shithole, uh, and it does need cleaning up. But we're uh, we're building all kinds of weird, and wonderful stuff at the moment. Um, this is a well under all these tools that I'm just scattered everywhere. There's a frame. This frame here is for a robot, some kind of robot thing that some university's doing. There's the whole bunch of components. We're going to make this, build this, make this happen. Uh, that's going to happen tomorrow. But there we go. That's a little general update. And obviously with this CNC build, I will keep you informed. And hopefully the next time I'll be able to show you at least the motor mounts and maybe some movement. Uh, the most difficult bit about it really is, is wiring in the electronics. I'm using a system called MyPlasm, which sounds nauseous than it actually is. Uh, a company called Promo Electronica in Poland. They supply these things and Believe you me, when I show it to you, you're gonna say, I want one. Um, it makes Mac 3 look like rocket science compared to um, this MyPlasm system. It is only for CNCs, um, but it is very, very good. It's relatively inexpensive. $300 um, for one, um, or it uh, might be $399 for one, uh, but you can buy a twin pack, which is what I've done, obviously one for the customer and one for myself. Uh, twin packs are about six hundred dollars, so which these days equates to about six hundred quid. So yeah, not so bad. The other thing that the MyPlasm guys are or Prom Electronica are developing is tube cutting. Now I'm getting a bit excited about this because we do a lot of we send quite a few bits away for laser tube cut, and it's a bit infuriating because it takes time, it takes money, and all that kind of thing. So it could well be that I might do a bolt on on the side of my CNC machine that does a little bit of tube cutting. I've done it before, but I've never done it using the MyPlasm system. So uh, we shall see what happens there. Uh, that's gonna be a little ways down the line. Anyway, I better get back to building this, otherwise customers not gonna be happy if they don't get this in the next week or so. So thanks for watching. If you like, subscribe, um, or give us a thumbs up, all that kind of business. If you don't like, tell us why, because you know it's always good to know. So anyway. Take care. See you soon. Don't forget to subscribe. Cheers.